the most famous line from one of cinema's most revered films is probably a plot hole. Rosebud. In the opening sequence of Orson Welles' 1941 classic, Citizen Kane, we see the final moments of Charles Foster Kane. With his last breath, Kane whispers his cryptic final word, launching a probe into the man and his past. Who or what is Rosebud? Was it a former lover? A riddle? Why was Rosebud on his mind moments before his death? All these questions provide the basis for the greatest character study in film history. There's only one problem. Who was even in the room to hear Kane say Rosebud? There's a lively debate on whether Rosebud is actually a plot hole or not. It's hard to claim that the nurse who handles Kane's corpse heard the whisper through a closed door in the other room. Later in the film, Kane's butler claims to have heard Rosebud. He just said, uh, Rosebud. But if we are to believe that, why wouldn't we see the butler in the room? Also, are we supposed to accept that the butler just hung out in the corner of the room, letting Kane die? He said all kinds of things that didn't mean anything. Sentimental fellow, aren't you? Mm. On top of this, there's an apocryphal claim that when an interviewer asked Wells about this plot hole, he urged the question not be brought up again. Who knows if it's a plot hole? And even better question, who cares? Even if it was an accident. This doesn't take anything away from the film. If a viewer's major takeaway from Citizen Kane, a movie packed with some of the best examples of filmmaking, is gripes with a plot hole, they're probably missing the point. But Kane and the Rosebud incident do bring up an important question concerning plot holes. When do they matter? And why? To understand this more, let's take a look at the Star Wars saga, a movie series rife with plot holes. What's most interesting about the plot holes in Star Wars is how audience responds so differently to them. How could a small inconsistency become a major problem for a viewer, while a serious breach in logic and plot structure goes by unnoticed? Let's first take a look at an example of plot failure in each episode of Star Wars. Then we can determine why some affect us more than others. The invasion of Naboo presents some problems. First off, if Sidious orders the Viceroy to wipe them out, all of them. During the film's major battle, why do the droids later take prisoners? Put down your weapons. They win this round. There's another Naboo plot hole made infamous by the biggest fan of the prequels, Mr. Plinkett, in his 2009 review of The Phantom Menace. Why not just land right outside the city? Or in the city? Why would the Trade Federation begin their invasion from the hemisphere opposite the capital? This strategy seems, at best, far from optimal. During the Battle of Geonosis, the ship carrying Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Padme is blasted by an enemy, rocking Padme off the spacecraft. When a clone later finds her lying on the ground, she orders him to take her to the hangar where Anakin and Obi-Wan are dueling Count Dooku. There's no explainable reason why she wouldn't know where those three ended up. In one of the larger plot holes of the saga in its entirety, Obi-Wan and Yoda decide to place Luke in the foster care of his uncle and aunt on Tatooine. If the goal was to hide the whereabouts of Anakin Skywalker's son, why would they put the boy on Anakin's home planet and keep his name Skywalker? There's always the possibility that Anakin didn't have the heart to seek out his son, but the Emperor? Under siege by Darth Vader and the Empire, Princess Leia sends C-3PO and R2-D2 away in an escape pod to the nearest planet, Tatooine. When spotted by the Empire's forces, the commander orders his squad to Hold your fire. There's no life for us. In a galaxy filled with battle and spy droids, why would the Empire only care about life forms? And if they spared the pod because they were trying to cut costs for their laser batteries, they didn't seem all that concerned with economy moments earlier when they began their attack. During Han and Leia's mix-up on Cloud City, Luke is under the tutelage of Master Yoda on Dagobah. Unless Luke's master course in Jediism only lasted a few days. It makes no sense he would later meet up with the team back on Cloud City. Luke, go to the trap! Either time is stretched, or Luke goes on a massive training regime, confronts his darkest fears, and explores the depths of the Force in light speed. The Emperor is one of the smartest people in the galaxy, 
But why does he sign off on a second Death Star with a design flaw? Maybe it's hubris. Still, that's transparently a bad idea. But it's not just the Emperor with the stupid plan. Luke's plan to rescue Han at the beginning of the film makes no sense at all. I present to you a gift. These two droids. What did he say? Even after you give him points for having the Force on his side, it still makes no sense why he would take so much unnecessary risk. What about Leia's attempt to rescue Han? I know that laugh. Even if she would have succeeded, Jabba would still be alive to send more bounty hunters after Han, he'd still have the droids, and Chewie would be doomed. Oh, and if these weren't enough, the entire film relies on a race of human-eating teddy bears outmaneuvering the Empire's finest troops. Starkiller Base makes about as much sense as a second Death Star. But even worse, how did the First Order even construct such a massive weapon secretly? So, it's big. The Republic has a horrible intelligence unit. Speaking of intelligence, Maz Kanata is supposed to be a shrewd, perceptive pirate queen. If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. Yet she hides her most valuable possessions in an open basement, and she doesn't notice the two spies hiding out in her castle. In a seemingly fatal crash on Jakku, Finn survives and notices that Poe has disappeared. It's assumed he is dead, but later in the film, Poe pops up, relatively unannounced, with close to no explanation on how he got there. Kylo leaves Rey, the most valuable prisoner in the galaxy, under the guard of just one single stormtrooper, the universe's most inept infantry unit. And I'll drop my weapon. You get the point. Plot holes run rampant in the galaxy far, far away. But why do only some register, while others are ignored or completely forgotten? For instance, many of the fans who grew up on the original trilogy often cite the plot inconsistencies of the prequel films as a major deterrent from enjoying the first three movies, while some who grew up on the prequel trilogy often pinpoint the flaws in The Force Awakens as a barrier to their appreciation. All the while, almost no one mentions the plot puzzles in A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, despite those two films having some of the most egregious example of porous plot points in the entire saga. The most likely explanation is that plot holes are only a concern when the audience has other underlying problems with the film. If you're having to think about how a plot hole could be possible, the movie is failing. You rarely notice a plot hole if the movie is working, and if you do, you are quick to dismiss it. You realize how unimportant it is. For instance, if the Mexican standoff finale of Reservoir Dogs engrossed a viewer, he or she is not likely to notice no one is aiming a gun at Nice Guy Eddie, and that when the guns fire, there's no reason for him to die. Likewise, rarely does anyone watch Toy Story and have the experience suffer from the film's internal logic falling apart when Buzz Lightyear, a toy convinced he is real, you actually think you're the Buzz Lightyear? still behaves as a toy when a human enters a room. Plot holes rarely take you out of the movie unless something else isn't working. If you can get over the confounding and nonsensical life cycle of Alien and Prometheus, you probably didn't have a problem with the film's empty symbolism, forced situations, flat characters, and complete lack of self-awareness. This is to say, arguing that a film falls apart because of its plot holes almost always amounts to putting the cart before the horse. This is one of the interesting aspects of Star Wars. Despite plot holes spread evenly throughout all the films, plot holes are an odd thing to ruin a film for someone. Maybe the Eagles could have flown Frodo and Sam right up to Mount Doom, avoiding all the rigmarole of the Lord of the Rings films. But knowing that shouldn't distract the viewer from appreciating the master blend of image and sound that make up the trilogy. And with Star Wars, gripes with plot make even less sense than with other films. At the end of the day, Star Wars is a mythology, and mythology is riddled with plot holes. It necessarily follows that Star Wars would share in the tradition's inconsistencies. And so, to take things full circle, the next time you watch Citizen Kane, you can save your energy appreciating the film's psychological insight, groundbreaking editing, and mind-blowing cinematography. And if after the movie you are left with a question, hopefully it isn't, who heard Rosebud? But instead, who cares? <laughs>